Welcome back to 5-Minute Chapters, the podcast that brings you concise summaries of influential writings in education and learning. I'm your host, Daniel Bow, and in today's episode, we'll dive into Chapter 2 of John Hattie's groundbreaking book, Visible Learning, where we explore the fascinating world of synthesizing influences on achievement. To set the stage, Hattie begins this chapter by introducing us to the concept of creating a continuum of achievement effects. Imagine a line where influences on the left decrease achievement, those on the right increase achievement, and those near the middle have little to no impact. Our goal is to identify and locate all possible influences on this continuum. But how do we measure these effects? Hattie utilizes a powerful tool called effect sizes, which provide a common expression of the magnitude of study outcomes. For instance, an effect size of D equals 1.0 indicates an increase of one standard deviation on the outcome, specifically improving school achievement. And what does that mean? Well, it's associated with advancing children's achievement by two to three years, improving the rate of learning by a staggering 50%, or showcasing a correlation between variables and achievement at around R equals 0.50. Now, before we dive deeper into the methodology, it's important to acknowledge the challenges of conducting meta-analysis. Hattie addresses a few key obstacles. First, there's publication bias, where researchers tend to publish only studies with significant results. It's like highlighting only the hits and ignoring the misses. Second, we have the file drawer problem where studies with non-significant results often remain hidden away in researchers' file drawers. And finally, there's the issue of generalizability. Remember, not all findings may be applicable to every context and population. To avoid these pitfalls, Hattie developed his own methodology by learning from the past. In the 80s, researchers like Glass, McGaw, Smith, Hedges, and Olkin made significant strides in synthesizing meta-analyses. However, their differing methods and criteria led to varying conclusions about the effectiveness of various interventions. Hattie recognized the need for a unified approach. So, how does Hattie approach the synthesis of over 800 meta-analyses in visible learning? He established a set of criteria for study selection, focusing on the quality of the study design, sample size, and relevance to the research question. Additionally, he employs a set of guidelines for interpreting those effect sizes, taking into account the magnitude, variability, and consistency of effects across the different populations and contexts. Now let's dive into some of the major findings that emerged from Hattie's synthesis of these 800-plus meta-analyses. It's time to explore what works and what doesn't in education. The research consistently shows that the most effective interventions are those that focus on the student. Providing timely feedback, fostering self-regulation skills, and encouraging metacognition all contribute to significant improvements in achievement. These interventions empower students to take ownership of their learning and become active participants in their educational journey. On the flip side, interventions that solely focus on the teacher, such as teacher training and professional development, have shown to be less effective in terms of impacting student achievement. While these efforts are undoubtedly valuable, the research highlights the importance of placing students at the center of the learning experience. Tailoring interventions to the specific content and context of learning proves to be highly effective. Direct instruction, where teachers provide explicit structured lessons and formative assessment, where students receive timely feedback to guide their learning, have consistently shown remarkable results. It's all about making the learning experience relevant and meaningful for students. Conversely, generic interventions that are not tailored to the specific needs of learners tend to have less impact class size reduction, and indiscriminate use of technology without thoughtful integration fall into this category. It's essential to recognize that one size does not fit all when it comes to education. What truly drives achievement? Active engagement and participation, 
Interventions like cooperative learning, where students collaborate and learn from one another, and problem-based learning, where they tackle real-world problems, consistently yield positive outcomes. These approaches promote critical thinking, creativity, and active involvement in the learning process. Lastly, interventions that rely on passive reception of information, such as traditional lectures and endless worksheets, have proven to be less effective. It's time to move away from a one-way flow of knowledge and embrace strategies that encourage students to be active participants in their own learning. As we wrap up this whirlwind tour of Chapter 2 of John Hattie's Visible Learning, it's crucial to emphasize the significance of evidence-based practices in education. Hattie's synthesis of over 800 meta-analyses provides educators and policymakers with a valuable resource for making informed decisions about effective interventions. Let's continue to champion ongoing research and evaluation to further enhance the effectiveness of these interventions, all with the ultimate goal of improving student achievement. Thank you for joining me on this episode of 5-Minute Chapters. Stay tuned for more engaging summaries of essential writings in the world of education and learning. Until next time, keep exploring and growing as educators. And remember, sometimes even teachers need cliff notes.